From numbers that follow players out of the womb to one saved by another player's wife. Here's how these MLB players got their jersey numbers. Let's start off with someone who was kind of bullied into picking his iconic number. The way Otani got his jersey number wasn't as straightforward as you think. You know how back in high school, the best player got called first in gym class and enjoyed other privileges? Well, not a lot changes when you turn pro. Not even the great Otani could escape this with Mike Trout around. You see, when he played in Japan, Otani wore the number 11, his favorite. But when he touched down in America to play for the Angels, they didn't let our boy have his 11 since they had retired in an honor of Jim Fragosi. All right, no problem, Otani thought. I would just pick the number 27. Oops, sorry Otani, 27 is also off the market, I'm afraid. Sadly for him, 27 was already worn by the best player in the Angels team, Mike Trout. And let's just say, Trout isn't the type of guy you can ask for his jersey number. The dude's a star. So, with 11 and 27 not up for grabs, Otani settled for 17. What is the reasoning behind why you chose 17 instead of 11? Somebody else was wearing that number, so... Besides, Trout can keep the number 27, because Otani took the MLB by storm all while wearing the number 17. And this made his jersey the most popular in 2023, even outselling Trout himself. The second fewest games to reach 500 career strikeouts while being a top 20 in batting? These are stats that shouldn't even cross someone's mind of achieving. This unicorn got Babe Ruth sweating in the Hall of Fame. I mean, how many baseball players are nicknamed after a mythical creature? I don't see anyone going around calling Anthony Goose a griffin. Otani was that guy. And he was heading to the other franchise in LA after signing the biggest contract in American sports history. Speaking of history, Otani was slapped by Deja Vu coming to the Dodgers. Once again, his jersey number wasn't available because some dude named Joe Kelly already beat him to number 17. Otani was probably fed up at this point and maybe was thinking of organizing a hit on Kelly, but the Dodgers quickly stepped in. I mean, do you really expect them to give Otani $700 million, but not his jersey number? At this point, one and seven are the only digits that look right under his name. So, Otani pulled a reverse Mike Trout on Joe Kelly. Kelly was even happy to give it up if it meant having the best two-way player in the world on their team. The Dodgers' new number 99 even said, I wasn't going to give it up to just anybody. If Shohei keeps performing, he'll be a future Hall of Famer, and I'll be able to have my number retired. That's the closest I'll get to the Hall of Fame. Just to show how willing Kelly was to give his number, his wife was even campaigning online for Otani to come to the Dodgers with the hashtag OTake17. If that doesn't show how cool Kelly and his wife are, then I don't know what does. Kelly taking one for the team. We see you, brother. Just keep a close eye on your wife when Otani comes to visit, though. I mean, the Japanese superstar gifted Kelly's wife a freaking silver Porsche just to say thank you for her campaign. Yes? It's yours. What? It was Shohei. He wanted to gift you a Porsche. Shots? I swear. <laughs> That's just how much Otani wants Mrs. Kelly. Oh, sorry. The number 17. But Otani could have never pulled the same thing with the wife of this next dude, who would likely start a war just to preserve his favorite number. To the baseball world, the number 22 may just be another jersey number. But when Jason Hayward rocks it, he's honoring someone very special to him that's living on through his memories. Back in high school, he was best friends with Andrew Wilmot. And not only did they get to play in the school's baseball team together, but they won the Georgia State Championship in 2005 as well. I thought best friends winning trophies was just something we see in sports movies with happy endings. But Georgia State didn't need a big screen to watch these two do it. And just so you know, Jason and Andrew were so close that Andrew's mom, Miss Rustin, was Jason's favorite teacher in high school. Being a topper in your best friend's mom's class and hitting home runs with them after school is wild. Jason was living the dream, if you ask me. But it would soon turn into a nightmare. A year after Andrew went to college, he lost his life in a car accident. Jason made it to the MLB, but still visited Miss Rustin every offseason in honor of his best friend. But that's not all he did. When he got drafted by the Braves, he asked for the number 22, the same digits his late best friend wore when they won the state championship. A rookie asking for such a number on his debut is audacious. 
But knowing what this meant for him, the organization granted him his wish. Even when he got traded to the Cardinals, he still wore 22. But things changed when he joined the LA Dodgers where he stopped wearing 22. But what happened? Don't worry, the fame didn't get to his head and he didn't forget about his bestie. The issue was the Dodgers already had a number 22, Clayton Kershaw. He's been a Dodger since 2008 and he's pretty darn reputable. So it'll be hard to get him to give up the jersey number. So Jay Hay just settled for one more than 22. 23. It may not be the same number Andrew wore, but that doesn't mean Hayward's going to forget about him anytime soon. Just as Jackie Bradley isn't going to be forgetting about his precious number even after they've snatched it from him more than once. Jackie Bradley and the number 19 are like Bert and Ernie. They've been together since like forever. And if I didn't know better, I would say the number 19 was literally waiting for him. It was bloody faded. Nothing you can tell me. Seriously, check it out. Bradley was born on the 19th of April, 1990, and his mom had spent 19 hours in labor, which is six times the normal period for delivery. Bradley's hero, whom he shares a name with, Jackie Robinson, was born in the year 1919. The universe couldn't be clearer with its message. That's why this miracle baby wore the number 19 throughout his high school and college years. So, when he hit the major league in 2013, it was a no-brainer that he would wear the only number he's been repping his whole life. Only problem was, Koji Uhara, a veteran reliever, was wearing that number. So, he settled for 25. Nevertheless, in 2017, when Uhara left the Red Sox, Bradley was reunited with his favorite number. I can't even be mad at Bradley. Dude's life was tied to the number 19. And even though he flirted with another number for four years, he went back to where his heart belonged. Unfortunately, years later, he would find himself with the Milwaukee Brewers, and none of the previous numbers he wore at Boston were up for grabs. He would then pick the number 41, because that was the total of the birth dates of his family, and also coincidentally, one shy of his idol's jersey number. Now nearing retirement, Bradley continues to wear the number 41 as a new player for the Kansas City Royals. How epic would it be if he could hold on until he was 41 years of age before he retires? But this next player would not be able to attempt such a feat because his jersey number is as enormous as his impact. Generally speaking, in the MLB, it's kind of a trend that if you're not a regular on the first team, the bigger jersey numbers are for you. So, when Aaron Judge was handed jersey number 99 by the Yankees during spring training back in 2016, nobody had to tell him how the organization felt about him. The fact that 2009 was the last time a Yankees player wore that number doesn't make things any better. Heck, I'm sure he got teased a couple times for it. Plus, number 99 couldn't be further from what he wanted. Because his Twitter name has 44 in it and his favorite number has always been 35. But something tells me he might stick with 99 for a while. I mean, the things Judge is doing are as big as the number on his back, no cap. In 2022, Judge hit 62 home runs, the most in the modern era. That was enough to beat Shohei Otani to the AL MVP award. A year later, he was named the 16th captain of the New York Yankees. But to welcome Aaron back to the Bronx as the 16th captain of this great organization, the New York Yankees. A role that was last held by Derek Jeter back in 2014. Oh, did I mention that his nine-year, $360 million deal makes him the highest paid position player ever in the MLB? If Judge allowed his number to determine his fate, we wouldn't be witnessing a legend in the making. He may not have chosen number 99, but it chose him to make it great. Judge may have gotten such a huge number early on, but this next player was hit with a small number, but with big shoes to fill as a rookie. Meet Nolan Arenado. When the Rockies gave him the number 28 during spring training, he was expecting a bigger number given he was a rookie. But then it dawned on him that maybe wearing a small number for a newcomer isn't such a bad idea. So he made the number to be kind of his thing, stating, wow, this is cool. People aren't gonna look at me like I'm some scrub. I'm some guy who looks like I've been doing this a long time. If I were in his shoes, I wouldn't complain either. And with the way Arenado has been playing, no one will be taking the jersey number 28 from him anytime soon. Since 2015, he's only registered more than 150 hits every year, finishing outside the top 10 only once. He also has 10 gold glove and six platinum glove awards, all while being an eight-time All-Star. It's safe to say he's definitely lived up to expectations. 
Well, there you have it. How these MLB players got their numbers. What reason baffled you the most? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe for more amazing MLB content. While you're at it, check out this video right here.